All right, so we've got this little job that came up, just a, just a little quickie uh, threading job I'm going to do for my friend Joe over at the welding shop. And it belongs to one of his customers, but they brought this in and asked him, could he uh, modify these two shoulder bolts to have a matching shoulder length of this original one here? Uh, so they need it. They need the two new ones here threaded up to the same distance that this shoulder length is here, even though it's a little bit longer. They, they said, don't even worry about the cotter pin hole, but it's pretty simple. So all we got to do, we're going to use a three jaw chuck, chuck this up. We'll drill a center in the end to support it. And then we will uh, simply just turn and thread, thread it back the way it needs to be. So one and seven eighths is the shoulder length. So we'll turn it so that it's one and seven eighths and then uh, pick up these threads here and turn it on back. So these are five eighths 11. So verified that with the um, 11 pitch leaf right there. So five eighths 11, just a uh, simple little job. Thought I would uh, grab it on camera. That way I can show you guys, you know, line it up on these threads right here and, uh, and getting that done. So let's go over to the uh, Precision Matthews and we'll go ahead and knock this little job out. First thing we'll do is we'll just get a center drilled in the end of the bolts here. Just chuck up on the the head of the bolt here, very lightly there. Get our center in there. And then snug up on our on our chuck. And then finish tightening our center up should be there let's see how let's see how straight that thing runs oh that ain't too bad all right so i'll set up a little radius tool and then we'll what we'll do is we'll plunge in to create the shoulder and the thread relief at the same time there and then start our thread We've got a radius insert <clears throat> all i'm going to do is just come up and just very gently touch that shoulder I'm going to use my DRO here to move it back. I forgot what I said I needed to go. One and seven eighths. Yes. 1.875. 1.875 right there. Okay. I'm going to zero that out. So there's our shoulder length. Now we'll just make our uh, undercut. Let's go about 120 deep, somewhere around that. All right, that's our uh, X zero. All right, so let's try our coolant. I'm pretty sure this, these are stainless bolts. Let's see if that'll help us out there. Come on, man. That's doing better. 120 right there. Wide it out just a little bit here. All right, there's our undercut. I'm gonna go swap this tool out for a threading insert and we'll get it threaded. So the, th the tool I've been using is this uh, Walter. I'm looking for my wrench, there it is. <clears throat> it's a Walter, it's the, it takes the insert, the MX-22. They make these in a couple different sizes. <coughs> Excuse me, something was in my throat there. But what I like about this tool, this is a proprietary tool for them, I believe. You have radius inserts like this guy here and you have threading inserts and you have a various uh, range of uh, grooving inserts too for shallow grooving, nothing real deep. But this one tool works pretty good. I just have to, I've only got the one here, so I have to 
swap it out whenever I want to go in between. So I'm actually, I want to see about maybe getting one more to keep in a tool block because I seem to use it often. Now I'm getting used to it for using the radius tool for like a thread relief or an undercut and then have the threading tool there next to it. So uh, anyway, I just wanted to show that because I've had some people ask me about that. I've been sharing this on Instagram and using it. And I got to say, I really like it. I think it's a high quality tool and it works great. We do need to turn these just slightly. It's a few thousands over. So to get this done before we actually thread it. Let's just take a couple there and establish the diameter. Just turn it five under. So we need four thousandths more. Definitely stainless steel. All right, now we can thread it. So this is definitely something uh, great to share with you guys, especially for the folks trying to learn uh, how to chase or pick up a thread. Unfortunately, it's a little hard for me to show you everything at once because there's kind of a lot going on. But keep in mind, I have my compound set at 29 and a half degrees. Uh, that is to be used for your, uh, your end feed there. That's the way that I like to do it. But you got to be able to line up your tool with a thread. So if you have your compound set at any angle you want, that's okay because you just need to be able to move your tool so that you can line up with the thread right there. If you don't want to use this for end feed, you don't have to. You can use this, but I use this for end feed. All right, so we're going to set up for an 11 pitch thread. And let me see, let's go ahead and it was um, 11 is going to be LBT 4V, LBT 4 and V. Okay, that should be 11. So what we're going to first do is engage the, uh, the half nut and then line up the threading tool with the existing thread using our compound slide and our cross slide. And then we, we will have these guys set to zero and then it'll be lined up with the thread and we'll go ahead and finish cutting the rest of it there. Okay, let's make sure that we're lined up with the thread. And by the way, I was gonna point out that we're gonna use every other line. So for this operation, I'll line up either one, two, three, or four to cut an 11 pitch. But to get started, let's go ahead, turn the machine on and I'm going to engage. All right, what I was doing, I'll just, uh, here, let's just back it out. That's going pretty, fast, I'll drop it down into 130. What I'm doing is instead of a, a scratch pass on here, I'm using the existing thread to verify that the tool is lined up. So let me engage it again. And I, all I do is I watch the tool, bring it right up to that thread, and I can tell that it's lined up and it's cutting an 11 pitch thread. So we're gonna do that again and then I'm gonna stop it. Half nuts are engaged. Just come somewhere on that thread and I'm gonna stop it. And now I'm gonna back up with the compound. Now I'm gonna run the tool and I'm working off the right side, this side of the threading tool. I'm gonna to come in with the cross slide until I feel it just touch, okay? I'm gonna set this guy to zero. Reach up here and zero out my DRO. Come on zero. Now we're going to be using the compound right here to engage the tool all the way to the root there to the depth. All right. I don't even have to do that because now we're lined up on the thread, but I just kind of want to know where the original depth of the thread is and then we'll back off from there. So I'm going to run this up and that's, um, that looks like a rolled thread. So it's going to touch the bottom. I'm just going to stop right there. It's gonna to touch the bottom first. It's not gonna to touch both sides, what I'm saying, since that's a rolled thread. It's kind of like a radius in the bottom. But now we have, our tool is lined up with a thread. I've got this set to zero to kind of, you know, simulate where the bottom is gonna be. We've got this set to zero there now. So really all we have to do at this point is back this out, okay? We back that out 
and use this compound end feed to make our passes across there to uh, cut it and it'll be lined up with that thread. All right, now I want to, um, I just backed the uh, compound out. I'm gonna use it to uh, touch off on our work surface here. All right, there's our, there's our touch off. Come back into zero here. Let's go ahead and make a little cut across this guy and see what happens. I'm not gonna use flood coolant this time. I'm just gonna use a little bit of cutting oil. It's, um, it's just harder to, for you guys to see that with the coolant and the oil does fine. All right, there's our first pass right there. And we're just gonna come back into the zero and see, I'm coming into this zero here and since I backed off on this, I'm just gonna just continue just feeding this in. So we'll go like another, we'll go another five right there. Set you back up here and then engage on number four here. Lining up good. After that last pass you saw, I went ahead and got my thread triangles out and mic'd it. And we are on the exact pitch according to my chart that comes with the thread triangles, which is 0.887 for a uh, 5 8 11 pitch right there. So the, the, um, the castle nut is still like trying to hang up a little bit. I don't know, maybe if there's some burrs on this or whatever, but I'm gonna make a couple more little spring passes across there, try to remove just a little bit to loosen it up some. But on, on a part like this, I'm sure that the exact pitch diameter, you're not really having to worry about following in that, 
that industrial tolerance right there. This is just something that somebody's throwing in. They're going to tighten this bolt up, and that's all they really care about. But I am showing you the proper technique here in that I am measuring this. I'm not just uh, you know shooting in the wind, uh, just testing it against a random nut there. But we're on the pitch, but it's still a little tight, so we're going to just take it like try to take like another half to one thousandths out of there to um, to get it to loosen up just a little bit. Bump another half uh, mark here on the compound. That's looking good right there. That cleaned up the right side flank all the way across. Hopefully that'll give us what we're looking for right there. It's got a beautiful fit on that nut. So that's exactly where we want to be right there. And that's what they want. All right, so this one's done. I'm just going to hit it with a file, make sure there's no sharp burrs on it. And then we'll knock that second one out too. All right, guys, our first bolt is done. All right, so I'm just going to repeat the process. I'll try to set the camera up maybe a little differently so you guys can kind of see what I'm doing here. But I'm just ready to uh, slam through this and get it done and get it back over to Joe. That looks good. We've got her lined up. What I've ended up doing on these is uh, because the bottom of that thread is so radius. I've just been looking down and I just center the tool up in between the, um, you know, just center it in the thread until it touches the root down there. And that's what I ended up doing on the last one. I'm going to back this guy out. <clears throat> go ahead and get our uh, touch off done. I want to go a little faster than that. 250. There's our touch. Make sure it's good to go here. Zero, zero. All right, this cut's going to bring us up to our zero. And I know from the last one, we got to go past it a little ways.
just go in about two two lines I want to make a spring pass here and then I'm going to go ahead and measure it and uh, see where it see where it's at all right just about there though All right, so we're at a 886 pitch diameter. 887 was what I calculated that it should be at. So that's it. And it's got a good fit. So that's when this one's threaded. I need to file it, get rid of those sharp burrs polish it and then this one will be done too all right well that was a pretty simple job and we got it finished up again the the hole i asked about do we need to drill the hole and they said no we're not we're not concerned about that just leave the hole where, right where it's at maybe they're just going to keep that cotter pin in the end and that'll you know keep the the bolt from coming all the way off there but um i i think it was probably a situation wherever this goes in you know the shoulder was so far out they needed to take up the slop there but regardless, what I wanted to share with you guys was, you know, a technique that I use for picking up an existing thread. And it, it may be a little uh, involved for somebody that hasn't done it, but believe me, it took a while. It took me a lot of practice to uh, kind of understand what it is that I needed to do, even though like my dad was, my dad showed me how to do that, how to pick up a thread. And it's not something that you just master the first time you do it. It takes many tries to um, get that muscle memory of what you need to do and where you need to move things and how everything operates. So, you know, it's just uh, something that I've done many times, especially with the hydraulic work. We had to do a lot of thread chasing with hydraulic work where you get a part in, a hydraulic rod or anything like that, a piston, a tube that has like a gall thread, kind of look what looks like that right there. You'd have a gall thread and you gotta be able to come in there and line your tool up on that existing thread to be able to chase it and clean them up. But works uh, the same for doing something like this if you need to thread a bolt uh, further up the shank there. So anyway, that's it. We got this one done. I'm gonna go hand those to Joe and uh, get back on some other projects around here.